Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dilly, and welcome to Next Gen Wrestling Proving Ground. We are starting off one of the semi-finals matchups for the Next Gen Championship Tournament. We have Elijah Morse making his way to the ring. We are going to be having two semi-finals matchups tonight. Tomorrow night we are having part two of Proving Ground. This is a two-part event, so we're having part one tonight, part two tomorrow night. Tomorrow night will be the finals. We are going to be crowning the first ever next gen champion tomorrow night, same time. We are absolutely stoked to get this underway. Elijah Morris looks more than confident, more than ready to take this whole tournament. I mean, I'd hate to be the guy stepping in the ring with him. Obviously tonight we have Elijah Morris going one on one against Jacob Young, another man who's very, very confident in himself. Another man who could definitely take it all the way. So we're definitely going to have to see how this match plays out. Definitely looking good for either man though, but one of them must lose, one of them must advance. We're definitely going to see which one will be doing which tonight. And here he comes. Straight out of New Zealand, this is Youngblood Jacob Young. Of course, a man who has been very impressive since starting off in, in NGW. Very excited to see what he can do here. I mean, we've gotten a good look at him so far. We've gotten a good look at his moveset. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in a match against a man like Elijah Morse. Like I said, Elijah Morse is not somebody I would ever choose to step in the ring with, I'll tell you that much. And it's gonna be interesting to see how Young handles himself here. We, of course, are in the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City, the heart of New York. Near sold out attendance as well. Just about a standing room only house here tonight. All these people are, of course, ready. They really want to see who that new next gen champion is going to be. Could be either one of these men. Oh, big jumping knee right out of the gate from Jacob Young. He's already looking to pin him too. Only getting a one count. Didn't figure he'd be ending it that quickly. I mean, you never know, but definitely not what I saw coming. Slinging so some furious punches here. Combo. Elijah Morris hasn't really had much to say in this matchup so far. Oh my god, a reverse pile driver. This early into the match, you can tell Jacob Young means business. Elijah Morse kicking out once again though. It's clearly not as one-sided as you'd think. Oh, Jacob Young just airs Elijah Morse. Oh, whips Jacob out of the ring. They are now outside. This match is being contested under normal rules. I will have that noted. There is a 10 count for Jacob Young to get back in here. Looks like neither of these men are gonna put too much regard into that 10 count. They're taking it to the outside and they're scrapping. Jacob Young going after the arm, of course. Elijah. He's been very dominant in his previous matches. Suffering a little bit here in the early goings. I definitely don't see that lasting too, too long. We shall see, though. Jacob Young. Oh, oh my God. Crashes and burns from a failed suicide dive attempt. And that is all Elijah Morse needed. I'll definitely have that noted here. Elijah Morse clearly thinking defense is the best offense. He hasn't done many big moves in this match, but that suicide dive reversal, simply moving out of the way, likely caused Jacob Young more damage than has already been caused to Elijah Morse in this matchup. That was probably the smartest thing I have ever seen, and all he had to do was move. And he's working on the legs here. I mean, it looks like Young's obviously favoring those ribs. I mean, if you're taking a bump like that on the outside, I would be too. Oh, knee strike. Jacob being smart here, though. He's going for frequent pins. That is definitely something also worth noting. One thing you'll see a lot in wrestling is you'll see wrestlers do a lot of big moves, but they won't go for pins as often. Let's see. Big roundhouse kick. I see a lot of wrestlers do big moves, but they don't always go for pins. If you're going to be smart, you know, you hit a big move, you're going to want to go for the pin. You'll want to end this match as quickly as possible. 
Jacob Young obviously is a very competitive spirit. He definitely enjoys this kind of competition against a guy like Elijah Morse. I feel like Elijah Morse is likely in the same boat, but definitely frequent covers are a key to success, I would say, in any kind of matchup. Especially one of this magnitude. Big crossbody takes down Morse, and another pin, like I mentioned. Frequent pins, that is the key to success. All you have to do is catch your opponent slipping for one second, catch him with a pin, and that could be it. This match could be over. Young laying in some more punches here. My combo once again. Going for the ribs. Going for the mouth. <laughs> now looks like he's going for a brain buster. There it is. Oh, dunking Elijah Morris on his head. You see he's going for something on the top rope here now. Elijah slowly getting back to his feet. Another cross body. Jacob Young is a man of many variations of that crossbody. Very nice rolling elbow there. What is he going for here? Springboard coast to coast lands. My God, I don't think we've seen him pull that one out before. Oh, I thought that was it for sure. Yeah, I genuinely do not think we have seen him do that one before. That is... Very interesting to pull off in a match like this. He's clearly very confident in himself right now. And I don't blame him. He's had this match in his back pocket. But Morse working on those ribs once again. This could be a turning point in this match if Morse is smart enough. Oh, drops him on those ribs too. Let's go. Just a two. In the very few moves Morse has pulled off in this match, though, he's already getting to a two count. Did expose that turnbuckle. Not sure if he has plans for that in the future. Oh, the bicycle knee! Looking to surprise Young here. Cover. Two. Oh, my God. That was 2.9. Holy... Young somehow stays in this. That was about as close as we've gotten. A big hurricane runner reversal by Young. Young clearly still in this match. Still has some fight left in him. Shooting star press. You gotta think with those injured ribs. I mean, it could just be speculation. He might be okay. But that's the only thing Morse has been targeting. That's the only thing Jacob has been selling. Oh, but look at him go. The Young Blood Neckbreaker. That is all it takes right there. He caught him off guard with it, but the ref is busy. He's dealing with that exposed turnbuckle pad. Oh my god. Young is furious right now. He had that match. He had it won. He had hit the finisher, but the ref was just distracted. Oh, the ref almost didn't want to count Young's pin there either. Oh! Big Lariat takes Young down. This is time for Morse to capitalize. Going for those ribs again. Look at him. The ribs, the back, they're all connected here. The turnbuckle pad once again coming off. Different corner this time. Clearly it worked in his favor last time. I don't know why he wouldn't do it again. Cross body by Young. Springboard, or sure, sorry, should I say a shooting star press? Now we might be looking for a springboard. Springboard shooting star press, let's go! Wow, one, two. Oh, I thought that was three. I thought Young was moving on to the finals. I thought that was three. My god. This match has been rather back and forth, if I do say so myself. Gotta end soon though. Something's gotta give here. They're outside the ring once again. Oh! <laughs> Morse's face just blasted off that ring post. My god. What is Young thinking here? Oh! A big clothesline outside the ring off the apron. You gotta think, with those hurt ribs, is he doing more damage to himself than anybody when doing big moves like that? 
that is yet to be seen, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Young bringing it back in the ring here. Looks to be going, I think he's going for that springboard clothesline. Springboard cross body, okay, okay. Keeping it fresh, keeping it fresh. Oh, Elijah Morse is cut open. I think he must have caught the edge of that guardrail. I'm not entirely sure where that happened, but he is bleeding quite a lot here. The ref is distracted once again. This is worth noting. Morse looking to take advantage. Huge Falcon Arrow. Okay. Nothing dirty happening with the ref's back turned. But it does look like Morse is going for the pin off of Frank off the Falcon Arrow. Nothing but two. Okay. Yeah, Morse is furious. Look at him stomping that those ribs, that torso region of Jacob Young. Working on it. Just working him over here. Oh my goodness. Oh, the knee was blocked. Young. What is he going for here? Half and half suplex. Let's go. Oh, Young is thinking about calling this quits. He's thinking about making this match end. Big clothesline into a kip up. Oh, I think we all know what it's time for here. Oh, I guess we don't. I thought he was going for that Young Blood neck breaker. What is he doing? Morse is on the top rope. What is his plan? What is he thinking? Oh my goodness. They're both on the top rope. Huge Hurricane Rana brings Morse down to the mat. That's got to be it for Morse. Cover him, kid. He's not covering him. What is he going for instead, though? Shooting Star Press off the top. Could this be it for Morse? Cover two. Jacob Young is moving on to the next gen championship match tomorrow night. What an amazing contest from both of these men. Jacob Young has absolutely dominated his side of the tournament bracket since the first episode of Next Gen Wrestling. He was in the very first match of Next Gen Wrestling against Miasma. And now he has qualified for the next gen championship match. And I wish him all the luck, honestly. Very great showing. And up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have another semi-finals matchup with Adam Alexander going one-on-one -on -one against the man they call T-Bone. Once again, this is a semi-finals contest. The winner of this matchup will go on to face Jacob Young tomorrow night for the Next Gen Championship very exciting a lot is on the line in this matchup we're gonna have to see some fierce fierce competition for both of these athletes to crown a winner Adam Alexander looking very confident as he normally is he's I would say overconfident I would say confident to the point of cocky and I mean hey you could argue there's nothing wrong with being a little cocky here and there but this man definitely has a bit of an inflated ego but at the same time, he is a great wrestler. Another man who would definitely deserve to have a lot of cockiness is this man, T-Bone, who has been, I would say, probably the most impressive athlete in Next Gen Wrestling so far. This man is an absolute unit. He is a machine. And I will note one thing here in this matchup that's going to maybe be a bit of a tide turner. This is the first time T-Bone's fighting a man who is really of the equivalent size to him. Hell, Adam Alexander might even be a little bit taller than T-Bone, but definitely they're close in weight. I mean, T-Bone's first match was against Brody, who's a large man, but since then, he's been a lot of smaller guys. He's not used to fighting men his own size. This will be an interesting dynamic here. But would you look at that? It looks like Adam Alexander does actually have an inch or two over T-Bone. Not sure he's fought a man taller than him. I'm not sure how tall Brody is, but... Adam Alexander is a very heaping individual himself. He is a very large, large man. By the way he moves, though, he wouldn't... You know, you wouldn't think he's as large as he is. I would say he's about maybe 6'6", six 6'7". Foot six, six foot probably about 300 pounds, close to. T-Bone, a large man himself. I would say 6'5", maybe... 280, 290. Cover. 
Alexander only gets a two in the early goings of this matchup. Let's see. There hasn't been, been any sort of advantages yet. Nobody's been able to get an upper hand. Not even a one count off a snap suplex. T-Bone is not having that today. It's fair enough. T-Bone. Hits a T-Bone suplex. Oh my god. That was unexpected. Into a big body splash. He's not even going for the pin. He's not even going for the pin. Big outside dive by T-Bone. My god. This is unlike anything we've ever seen from T-Bone, if I do say so myself. Especially with that outside dive, but he also just kind of hit a T-Bone like it was nothing. He hit that slam like it was just another move for him. Adam Alexander, though, is taking this punishment, and he's dishing it back. Falcon Arrow on the outside! Oh, my God! Oh, my God. I would hate to be T-Bone right now. That would not have felt great. Adam Alexander maybe looking for a dive himself. Suicide dive through the middle ropes. Like I said, he is not a small man. He moves like a cruiserweight, but he is built like a super heavyweight. He's built like a super athlete. He is a super athlete, really. He can do just about anything he wants. And that is what he does. He does anything he wants to do. Including throw T-Bone across the ring. Across the floor to the other side of the ring. Oh, the big knee strike there from Adam Alexander. With ease. With ease. We're going to get T-Bone back in the ring, maybe. Or maybe. Oh, into that ring post. Ring posts have claimed quite a few notches of skin, even tonight alone. In our first matchup, there was some blood on Elijah Morse's face from that ring post. T-Bone does not appear to be bleeding, at least not yet. The ring post, though, is out for blood at any time. T-Bone may also be out for blood here. T-Bone suplex into the corner! Oh, and that's going to be a pinfall here. Adam Alexander might be out of this. He has the ropes. This is what I like to call ring awareness, ladies and gentlemen. Some lack it. Adam Alexander is not one of those men. He knows where he is at all times. That rope break was very prominent of showing his ring awareness. Look at him doing some chain wrestling here. The top hammer lock. Nothing there. T-Bone breaks out of it. Oh, and here we go. We've seen T-Bone pull this out before. The flurry of German suplexes. My God. Such power. Such athleticism shown by T-Bone. Cranking the neck here as well, it looks like. He is making Adam Alexander hurt right now. That is his mission, to make Alexander hurt. The more he can hurt him, the, the more chance he has of pinning Adam Alexander at some point. I'm not sure what he's going for here, but I would hate to be Adam Alexander. Body slam. T-Bone might... Looks like he was looking for a top rope maneuver. He is looking for a top rope maneuver. Oh, big frog splash by T-Bone. Normally, big men and top ropes do not go well together, as I've mentioned, but that was a beautiful, beautiful display. Adam Alexander. Oh, look at this. Rolling T-Bone up. This could be it. Oh, he kicks out right away. T-Bone was not having that or that Meteora from the looks of it. Alexander whipping T-Bone to the apron. Oh, and Zakuri. Look, they caught him right in the eye. I mean, hey, if you can knock your opponent's eye out, you definitely have a pretty good advantage in this match, I'd say. Adam Alexander with another Falcon arrow on the outside. My God. Lifting T-Bone six, seven feet up in the air like that, and just slamming him down. They are on, they're nearing the stage here. You can definitely see the divide where it's padding meeting concrete. Thankfully they were able to stay away from that. Concrete is the kind of thing that'll shorten your career. Oh, big springboard knee strike by Alexander. He turns it right into a wake up taunt. 
Ring awareness once again. Luthez press here. Adam Alexander finally looking to be on the comeback here. For a while there, T-Bone was dominating him. But now I'm not too sure. I'd say we've been pretty even all throughout this match. I think it's just, I think we're just one big move away from deciding who is really going to have this match won. Adam Alexander is just raining down punches on T-Bone's face. This is unadulterated abuse here. Oh my god, I think that one, I think that one drew blood. Let's see. Oh yeah, he is bleeding from the head now. My god, I think that was at least 20 strikes to the face by Alexander. Purely disgusting, but if T-Bone wasn't able to block it, I mean, it's fair game. T-Bone, though, he sees his blood. He is pissed off about it. I think Adam Alexander is about to find that out firsthand. What is he going for here? Oh, no, he can't. He can't be doing this. Burning hammer on T-Bone. Another banned move. I guess it's not banned in next gen wrestling. The burning hammer only gets a two. Oh my god. Adam Alexander has stooped to those levels before of pulling out previously banned moves. Oh my god. Roundhouse kick takes T Bone's head off. Looked like he was going for another one, but T Bone coming back here. Looking to defend himself finally. Oh! T Bone suplex! Catches him off guard. Caught me off guard, for God's sakes. And I was watching him the whole time. Oh, and he's dragging him towards the middle of the ring. He knows that Adam Alexander's ring awareness is unprecedented. Oh, my God. Just barely kicking out of that T-bone attempt. I guess it wasn't the T-bone that he was attempting, but we'll go with that. Oh, we've seen him go for that avalanche T-bone before. Not sure if that was what he was going for. Oh, no. We have definitely seen this one, too. This is the banned Vertebreaker. Once again, not banned in Next Gen Wrestling, but we might have to look into that here. Cover to Adam Alexander moves on to the finals. It is official right now, tomorrow night, for the Next Gen Championship Adam Alexander will be facing Jacob Young in the main event of Proving Ground Night 2. Wow. And if you thought that wasn't good enough, here we go. We have an internet championship ambulance match. We are ending the feud, the biggest feud in next-gen wrestling history, arguably, between Rip Steel and this man here, his challenger, this is Kenny Navarro. Obviously, for the last few weeks, Rip Steel and Kenny Navarro have been at each other's throats. Both of them wanting only one thing, and that is the internet championship. Rip Steel has had a tight grip on that title, but Kenny Navarro is looking to get it off of him tonight. Of course, two weeks ago, Rip Steel did beat Chase Matthews in a number one contenders match. Rip Steel attacked him after the match with the internet championship smacking him right across the head with it. Last week there was that very insane backstage brawl that took up most of the show. It happened from the beginning to the end between Rip Steel and Navarro. Obviously that match ended, the backstage brawl I should say, it wasn't quite a match. The backstage brawl ended with Navarro placing Rip Steel in an ambulance prompting tonight's stipulation of an ambulance match for that internet championship. And here he is, a man who has been extremely dominant since starting off in Next Gen Wrestling. He's also been quite cowardly. He's also been a bit of a weasel here and there. I only say this because I know he's not going to punch me through the screen. This is the first and only as of yet internet champion Rip Steele. And now I will note one thing here. 
the graphic that just displayed on screen with his name and the pre-match graphic as well both displayed Mr. McKnight. Mr. McKnight, obviously, is not present at ringside. He's not coming out with Ray of Steel. We don't have a reason for this. We have not been given any answers as to why Mr. McKnight is not here. I don't know if this will be cleared up at any point, but Rip Steele is going in alone for this matchup. He could just be going in alone because he wants to prove to the world, he wants to prove to Rip Steele, he wants to prove to the NGW universe that he can do this on his own. But I'm not too sure. That would just be speculation, and that quite frankly is all it is. Rip Steele taking his time here, basking in this moment, basking in the Hammerstein Ballroom, basking in holding that internet championship. I don't think he's afraid of losing it, quite frankly. Here we go. The ambulance is coming down to the ring, and that is what we're here for, folks. That is the internet championship these two men are about to go to absolute battle for. And I am all for it. The match has begun. Oh my god, a huge elbow by Kenny Navarro right out the gate. My god, oh, and a big boot. Kenny, obviously, his blood boils every time he even hears Rip Steel's name. He is absolutely furious, and he's bringing the pain to Rip Steel. But Rip Steel looking to give some back here, I would say. Oh, Navarro, though. Versus the whip, brings him outside. Oh my god, a senton off the apron. We are hot and heavy right off the bat here in this match. And I am not surprised one bit. Oh, Navarro is just laying down stomps to Rip's vertebrae. And the ambulance doors have been open. Kenny Navarro is looking to make quick work of Rip Steel here. I can't say I blame him. Oh, he's already in the ambulance. He's already looking to close the door, too. Oh, but of course, Rip Steele, obviously able to outpower him this early on. You're going to have to do a lot of damage to Rip Steele for him to lose any sort of strength. For him to not be able to outpower you, you're practically going to have to give him a shot to the head. Here we go. The big strikes coming in. What is this? A full Nelson? Oh, my God. A full Nelson slam. And we have a sledgehammer, folks. These things are absolutely brutal. Obviously, we have about, uh, you know, three foot long wooden stick with about five pounds of metal. Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm not sure if that hit him flush, but that was aimed directly at Rip Steel's cranium. And if that hit him, I couldn't quite tell if it did, but if that hit him, I would say he has a cracked skull right about now. Judging by the lack of blood, oh my god, into the ring post. My god. Kenny Navarro has a shovel. <laughs> oh my god, man. Navarro is a man possessed, and I cannot say I blame him one bit. After the torment Rip Steel has been putting him through, he has all of the right in the world to act this deranged. Oh, Rip Steel with a big shoulder block takes down Navarro. Kick to the back here. You know, it definitely would be smart if you're going to work on that back here. You know, humans only have one back. If it's hurt, there's not much they can do. Oh, military press outside the ring. Oh, Navarro gets slammed down. I will state, those pads outside the ring are thin. Those pads are less than two inches in thickness. It may seem like, oh, you're getting slammed on pads. That's not so bad. No, you're, you might as well be getting slammed on concrete. There's no give. Oh, my God. Big clothesline. You might as well be slammed on concrete, being slammed on those pads. There's not a whole lot going on there. And that's a shoot. Rip Steel bringing Navarro back towards the ambulance. Obviously, that is the objective of the match. There is no pinfalls, no submissions, no countouts, no disqualifications. The only way to win this match is to place your opponent in the back of the ambulance and close both doors, locking him inside. Here we go. Navarro looking to do just that right now. We'll see if he's able to. 
Oh, he's got one door shut. He's halfway there. Halfway to holding the internet championship for the first time. Is he going to do it? Oh, he is fighting Rip Steeler. This could be it, folks. I think Navarro's about to do it. Oh, I thought the door was closing. I thought the door was closing. But Rip Steel is back out with another military press. Oh, and Navarro on the ground once again. Rip needs to take this opportunity. He needs to take his shot and get Navarro in the ambulance, but he's not doing it. Oh, I think he has more sinister plans in mind here. Of course, that torture rack. Oh, and he spins him around. My God. That was the torture rack spin out slam. I'm not sure if he has a good name for that yet or not, but. A whole lot of pain. That's what I'd call that move. A whole lot of pain. Boom. Same with that one. Big electric chair into a face buster. Navarro is absolutely out of it right now. And I think Rip Steel is aware of this. He is simply playing with his food. And I can't say I blame him. Oh, Navarro, though. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. I think he's getting close. Rip Steel likes to think so anyway. Bashing the back off the hardest part in the ring, that ring apron. Rip Steel is very focused on using that ring apron to his advantage. Which is smart, I will say, because everybody knows that is the hardest part of the ring. When you're hitting that apron, you are hitting exposed steel. There is absolutely nothing covering that steel there. Oh my god. Big suplex on the outside as well. Rip is going to have his way with Navarro if this keeps going the way it's going. Looks like he's finally trying to put Navarro away here. Navarro is now in the ambulance. That's step one. Step two, closing that door there, which he's done. And step three, if he does this, he can retain the championship, is closing that second door. Oh, my God. Kenny Navarro barely able to get out of there. Oh my God. Rip Steel bring, brings Kenny Navarro back in the ring, obviously looking to dish out some more punishment. Oh, Navarro dodges out of the way of that pounce. He whips Steel, but Steel reverses. Anytime Navarro is able to gather any sort of a momentum, any kind of comeback, anytime he even tries to come back, Rip Steel is able to shut him down with absolute ease. And now Rip Steel looking for a weapon. He's got a steel chair here. Rip Steel's a big enough man on his own. He does not need a weapon, let alone a one like a steel chair, which has no give. Oh, but he made it have give. Look at that chair. After three strikes, look at that chair. It is bent. It is a heap of metal. And Rip Steel putting Navarro up for that torture rack. My God. Navarro taps out, and if this was a normal match, that would be it. It would be over. I think Navarro's just tapping out there just to, you know, make Rip Steel let him go. I can't say I blame him. I'm, he, I'm sure he's thankful it worked. I'm sure he's thankful Rip did let him go. He is absolutely depleted, and Rip Steel needs to start making up for this. He needs to start putting his plan into action. But Navarro, with any sort of fight he has left in him, is trying to come back here. Roll through Stunner. That could be exactly what he needed to come back in this matchup. We are definitely going to see what Navarro has left in the tank. Here we go. Forearm chop, forearm chop. And he's stomping a muddle and he's going to walk it dry. Ladies and gentlemen, Navarro could be coming back here properly. What is this? Maybe a brain buster? Oh, dropping Rip Steel on the top of his head. That'll knock anybody loopy. Come on, Navarro, do this. Nobody wants to see Rip Steel retain that title, let's be honest. Oh, into that exposed turnbuckle. 
Not sure when that one got exposed, but that'll do it. In that turnbuckle, Shining Wizard into a Bulldog. Navarro has an opening here. This is what he's been waiting for. Setting Rip Steel outside the ring. Let's go. Oh my god, a springboard shooting star press to the outside. My god, this man is clearly willing to put his own body at the line if it means getting anywhere closer to that internet championship. Huge exploder there to Rip Seal. And they are going towards that ambulance. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're about to be calling it an end. Navarro, though. Not done yet. Huge clothesline off the apron. Could that have been the cherry on top? Oh, Navarro. I'm not sure what he's going for here. Oh, my God. Just dunking steel down. My God. The drop kick. Oh, but steel. Able to capitalize. That dropkick didn't do much to steal at all. It didn't really connect. Rip reversed, but Kenny back on top once again. This is volatile here. Navarro once again. Oh, a sit-out powerbomb to Rip Steel. I'm not sure what he's trying here. He should be trying to put Rip Steel in that ambulance. I have a feeling he has something a bit more sinister in mind, but I'm not... Oh, no, he's not. He's not. Spiral tap. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That would kill both men. Rip Steel in the ambulance. His ribs could be shattered. Navarro able to close the first door with ease. Oh, my God. Could we be seeing this here? That's it. Kenny Navarro has done it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. We have a new internet champion at the end of night one of NGW Proving Ground. Kenny Navarro has dethroned the ever-powerful Rip Steel. Kenny Navarro is the internet champion. And this is the biggest feel-good moment of all time in next-gen wrestling. This is incredible to see. My god, that's a feel-good moment. Ladies and gentlemen, that was night one of Next Gen Wrestling Proving Ground. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, of course, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, click the bell icon, and tune in tomorrow night. Same time, we will be here with Next Gen Wrestling Proving Ground night two. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been your host. This is Dilly. Thank you for choosing Next Gen.